I'm changing out a, <coughs> a thermal print head today. This uh, a receipt printer is not printing properly. It's leaving some blank spots. Uh, customers aren't really seeing exactly what they're paying for, making some confusion. And the part number that we're putting in is going to be 2141001. Uh, it's going on an Epson printer. Uh, it's a TM-T88V. The model is M244A. Go ahead and open it up. If you've got any receipt paper in there, let's go ahead and pull it out. Get it out of your way. And you got a, a front cover here, here on this lip. Uh, you just pull downwards and it comes out to the base and then you're going to lift up from the bottom to bring the piece out. Now you go ahead and rotate it over top, over top. And you got four screws we got to remove here first. They're all matching screws, so we'll go ahead and extract those. together in one spot and just keep them separate and only because they're a different style screw uh, then you've got to take out your dip switch panel cover it's got one screw here and you know it's a different screw than the other four that you just removed so keep it separate with the plate Alright, now with all those parts removed, the main housing should come out pretty easy. Just going to flip it over and I'm going to pop the lid for myself to do this so I can get a hand in here. And just kind of lift it out straight up, easing it out. I'd say it's easy, but. So I ended up lifting a little bit from the front, and because uh, I believe it was catching on the power switch here. So once I got clear of the power switch, I can pull the whole assembly out. All right, now with the everything out, we're going to go ahead and we need to access the. I'm going to go ahead and just remove this base panel real quick. This is where the terminal wire is going to be. It's with one screw up in this upper corner here. Move the cover plate. It's going to be this, this ribbon cable right here is the one we're going to access later on, but I'm going to leave it plugged in for now. Now we'll go ahead and flip it over, and I've got uh, two screws that I'm going to, it's easier to, I'm going to remove them now, and that's to, to it's going to end up releasing the spring-loaded mechanism on the inside, but I'm not going to pop it out, but I'm going to take out those two screws now first in this position, and then after the, afterwards we're going to take off these two side ones to extract the, the, the cut head. The screws I'm removing now are uh, the tensioner that presses that thermal printer head up against the receipt as it's passing through. Both of those screws are out. And now we're going to pop off this upper top part right here. We got a screw on the left side here, and I got a screw in the in this lower indentation, this recess. it up just to get this cutter out and there are some wires on the side here you just got to watch I'm, I'm gonna see if I can just leave it attached but I just got to get it out of my way so I can do this work and so I'm gonna kind of hold it and that's why I went ahead and 
uh, remove the other screws first so I wouldn't have to deal with that now. Let's see if I can get something over here to rest this on. I'm using the actual box, the housing, to, to rest it on. It's going to probably end up being about the right height. Okay, uh, the, the spring-loaded uh, retainer in here. I'm going to lift the base of it up a little to get it. There's two side catches. I don't want to move too much. There's some side catches, uh, notches. And when you open it up, you're going to see that clearly. You should be able to determine what you have to do. I'm going to raise this spring-loaded catch up in the air, and it just comes right out. It's coming out towards me, and it's got the springs on it. Like so. Try and get this lid open again without the cutter falling on me. And now I just, I'm going to tip out the thermal head. And you just uh, just weave it out through the system until it comes completely out. And I'm, I'm still going to leave it connected. And I'm going to take the new thermal print head, the replacement. I'm going to go ahead and weave it back through where the other one was. Trying to hold everything steady. Alright, it's into place. Now I'm going to reposition the spring tensioner. And there are there are uh, there are pegs that these springs uh, correlate with. So make sure you line the springs up over those pegs to hold it into place. Sorry to do this without looking up over top of everything. Sure is easier when you don't have to have a camera seeing everything. So I can do this from over top. That's what it was. I couldn't see much. one side I didn't have in properly. My pegs are lined up now. Now that I can see what I'm doing, and I'm going to just push the springs in and compress them and lock it down. Sorry, I made it look harder than it was. If you don't have a camera in your way, it's pretty easy to do it. All right, so now I need to rotate my cutting blade back into place. Should still have my screw there, I do. So those are back in place. Now we need to put back in the two screws that retained the spring tensioner. Have to push down on it a little bit to get it to align.
it was. It, they aren't lined up too well just because it wasn't fully dropped into the notches. I'm just going to take a small felt screwdriver and depress the plate a little bit to get it into position. I have the screw ready to go in before I do that. Now, let's go ahead and close this lid back because everything from this point is going to be on the other side. And I'm just going to carefully extract this ribbon cable, trying not to damage the terminal that it's going into. Pulling straight out. Back feed the ribbon cable out, bring the new one in. And with equal pressure, just seat it firmly into the terminal. Feels like it's fully in there. And I'm gonna I don't want to really bend this as much as I can like it was in the past from the original installation. I'm gonna try and just see if I can curve it and roll it over some without putting heavy creases in it, but might just be inevitable. Put our plate back on. Watch if there's a, uh, a notch on the plate. Put it into the corresponding slot. Rest the plate down. So I got the ribbon cable under there, but I didn't too put too heavy of a crimp in the cable itself. Place the single screw. Time to slide it back into the housing. Uh, just watch in the housing. There are some catch tabs down in the back for uh, positioning. Uh, make sure that the the square base on the back side is on the inside of those tabs. And uh, remember, pay attention to your power switch. It may give you little issues trying to go through the, the door or going into the housing. I'm just trying to slide it just straight in. And uh, I'm not sure you can see it. Let me get my fat finger out of the way, but those are the tabs that you got to watch out for that the housing is on the right side of it. So it's seated in properly. We got the power switch in the right place. Go and rest it on its back. Put the dip switch cover plate back in. Return the Four housing screws. Then the next step, we're just going to return the cover plate. I'll do it from the side here and show you. Kind of goes in a little and drops down into place and then slides forward. That should be everything. I'll go ahead and put the paper back in and go connect her up and test it. And that's how you switch out your thermal print head 